Hello all, this is Sahana here to present recessive epistasis. So, the prevention of the expression of a gene by a recessive non-allelic gene is called recessive epistasis. So, it is just the opposite of dominant epistasis. In dominant epistasis, it was a case where the prevention of expression of a particular gene was suppressed by the dominant non-allelic gene while in recessive epistasis it so happens that the prevention of expression of a gene is done by a recessive non-allelic gene so that is called the recessive epistasis so in the case of uh, recessive epistasis there is a pair of non-allelic genes of which one produces its phenotypic effect independently when it is in a dominant state while another cannot produce a phenotypic effect independently, which means this particular uh, gene need the supplement uh, supplementation of the other non-allelic gene to produce its own effect. So that is what uh, the uh, recessive epistasis say. So here in this case, the classical 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio becomes a 9 is to 3 is to 4 ratio here. Now, when recessive allele at one locus, so just think this is a homozygous, uh, a homologous chromosome and here this is one locus where one pair of gene is present and this is another locus where another pair of gene is present. So here when recessive alleles at one locus mask the expression of both of this, that is dom dominant and recessive allele, alleles at another locus this is known as this condition is known as recessive epistasis so this type of gene interaction is also called as supplementary epistasis because as i said before this pair of non-allelic genes cannot produce its phenotypic effect independently they need uh, they need the support of this part this pair of non-alleles so this allele they supplement the B genes to produce their own phenotypic effects here. That is why they are also called as supplementary epistasis. Now, for example, say here uh, A is a A and B are two different non-allelic gene pairs. Here, A can produce a phenotypic effect, its own phenotypic effect, independently in dominant uh, in its dominant state. If it is homozygous dominant, capital A and capital A, if it is there, it can produce its own character there. But what happens in the uh, B gene is the, they cannot produce a phenotypic effect independently. So in this particular case, the recessive gene A, that is recessive homozygous gene A, suppresses the expression of the alleles at B locus here. But in the presence of dominant allele A, if the alleles here present here at A locus is in dominant condition, then the alleles of the locus B will produce, which means this particular alleles at, uh, here at A locus is supplementing the effects of alleles at the locus B here. So what happens in the genotypes? If we just take, the, uh, take a look at the genotypes here, when both the dominant alleles are present, then there is different phenotype that is being produced and when there is only one a dominant allele is present then again different phenotype is being produced here not same whereas when the uh, alleles at a locus is in homozygous recessive condition then there is no chance that the b can produce their character phenotypic character alone so as a result what happens when a alleles are recessive in condition then the phenotypes produced are same irrespective of the phenotype of uh, i mean genotype of the b alleles here now if we just consider this particular case here here f1 parent is red in color which means see uh, here the alleles a are dominant and b is recessive which produces red color product and here parent 2 as recessive allele a which means the alleles are recessive here and the b cannot produce its own character so the product is white here and the resulting f1 hybrid is in heterozygous condition where both the allele both the dominant alleles are present resulting in the formation of purple color so that is a character so three characters are here, there here and this when uh, when this f1 hybrid are self crossed then the f2 generation offsprings or progenies had 
purple, red and white color progenies in the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 4. So, to understand this particular phenotypic ratio, we can just consider this pathway. This is just a simple uh, pain biochemical pathway where the enzyme A here, see as you can see here, this is a white sub, uh, substance which, is, which acts as a substrate and whenever the enzyme A, that is uh, the enzyme A is produced by the action of the dominant allele A. Whenever enzyme A is being produced, then the white substrate is converted into red color product here, which acts as the substrate for enzyme B to uh, get its action. So here, when enzyme A is present, the white substrate is getting converted into red product. And when red product is present and the enzyme B is also present, then the enzyme B can uh, be active and express its character by converting the red product into purple product here. So here, that is what happened in the uh, before uh, the prior uh, genotype that we discussed here. If there is no uh, dominant allele A, which produces enzyme A here. If you uh, just think or uh, just uh, take it as a, uh, the allele A is in homozygous recessive condition. There is no formation of enzyme A. If there is no formation of enzyme A, there is no conversion of white substrate into red product or red substrate. So this, if there is no red uh, substrate, even if the enzyme B is produced or not produced, then there is no chance of purple color product that is being produced. So that is how it is supplementing. The enzyme A is supplementing the phenotypic character of the enzyme B here. So now this is a gist of F2 self cross progeny here. So I told the F2 phenotypic ratio will be in the uh, 9 is to 3 is to 4 ratio. So here 9 of them were purple and 3 of them were red and 4 of them were white. So how exactly is in the purple the genotypes had at least one of the functional that is both uh, the uh, these were in homozygous or heterozygous they have at least one copy of both the functional enzymes here or functional allele that is a and b both the functional alleles are being present here that is how the purple is being produced that is the white substrate is converted by the capital a or the dominant a allele to red product and the capital B or the dominant B converts the red product into purple product. That is how we get the purple color progenies here. And uh, the next genotypes like here in the red color phenotypes what happens is only one, they have only one functional enzyme A which produces or which converts the white substrate into red color product but it fails to convert the red color product into purple color product as there is no allele that is there is no dominant allele B which can convert the red color product into a purple color product here and what happens in the case of white phenotypic uh, trait is there is no functional enzyme A there are two cases again in this so here uh, in in just two cases what happens is there is no production of uh, enzyme A here. There is no functional allele dominant A here which means there is no conversion of white substrate into red color substrate. As a result what happens though there is a presence of dominant allele B which, uh, which produces enzyme B there is no substrate for enzyme B. Remember the red color product that is being converted by the enzyme A acts as the substrate for enzyme B here. So, there, since there is no enzyme, uh, there is no substrate for the enzyme B, then the product remains white in color. And there is another condition where no functional enzymes are present. Either of the dominant alleles are not present, which means there is no conversion of the white substrate at all. So, it remains the same here. And so, getting into the genetic problems, these are the examples where the first one is uh, first one is the inheritance of grain color in maize. So here purple, red and white color grains are produced and it says that the purple color develops in the presence of two dominant genes that is R and P and red color is in the presence of the dominant gene R and white color in homozygous recessive condition that is 
uh, recessive RR and recessive PP. So the question goes like this, a cross between purple and white green color strains of maize produced plants with purple color in F1 generation and self crossing of this of these F1 plants produced progeny with purple, red and white greens in the F2 generation which is in the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 4. So for the more, before moving on to the solution we will have to analyze the question first. So here the question says the purple color develops in the presence of two dominant genes that is R and P which means the purple color is the ultimate color that is being produced with the action of two dominant alleles. So that is the ultimate product here. So that is the ultimate product, the purple product and red color in the presence of dominant gene R with the, in the presence of only one gene, the red color is being produced, which means this is the epistatic gene here, which, uh, uh, which can express its trait independently, right? Whereas P cannot express its character independently or the purple producing allele cannot produce, uh, cannot express independently, it needs the supplementation of R to produce its character that is purple. So that is the ultimate character here and the red color is the intermediate product or intermediate uh, color that is being produced and white color acts as a substrate. Alright, so to analyze, we'll take the white substrate here and with the action of allele R, that is the dominant allele R, red product is being produced and when allele P, the dominant allele P is also present provided with the red substrate is formed, then the purple product is also formed here. So this is a just analysis of this particular question. Now we'll move on to the uh, crosses here and one more thing is we need not work on genotypes here genotypes of the F1 parents because already it have been given here it, it has been given in the question here the purple parent has this homozygous condition and the white uh, parent is also having the uh, homozygous genotype recessive genotype here so it's easy to uh, go forward with the process here these are the F1 parents, that is the purple grains and white grains. The gamete formation is happening here and F1 generation produces purple grains. And F2 progenies, uh, F2 parents are selected, uh, which means the F1 progenies are self-crossed here, which acts as F2 parents and the F2 gametes are being formed here. And when these are taken in a Punnett square, then there are different progenies that, in, that is being formed here. There is purple color that is formed, there is white color formed, then, then there is red color that is formed. So here, first we'll fill in, fill in the Punnett square with the genotypes, then we'll analyze the phenotypic characters here. So here, when uh, the only thing to observe here is whenever both the dominant alleles are present, at least one of them are present in a genotype, that, that results in the formation of purple color because R is supplemented by, I mean P is supplemented by R dominant allele here. So whenever both the dominant allele are present, then the phenotypic trait will be purple. And whenever there is only uh, P is present, only dominant allele P is there, there is no use at all. So the character that is being produced is white. Why there is no use of this uh, dominant P here? Because there is no substrate for uh, enzyme P to act upon, right? To convert the red product into purple product. When there is no red product, then this uh, enzyme P has no job to do here. So the product will be white here. And when there is dominant R and recessive P, then the intermediate color is being formed here. That is red color product is being formed here. So that is how we get the F2 phenotypic ratio that, that is 9 is to 3 is to 4 with the phenotypes purple, red and white respectively. Now this is the second example where uh, the fruit color of sorghum is inherited here. So in the sorghum, the dominant gene P is responsible for purple color fruit, which is dominant over brown color, which is produced by recessive allele Q. 
when both the dominant genes p and q are pro, uh, brought together either in homozygous or heterozygous condition the purple purple color is changed to red now the question goes like this a cross between purple and brown results in the plants with red color in f1 generation and when the f1 heterozygotes are selfed three kinds of phenotypic classes were produced in the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 4 now getting into the analysis so here what the question says is purple color fruit is dominant over brown color all right which is produced by the recessive allele q and when both the dominant genes are brought together either in homozygous or heterozygous condition the purple color changes to red which means it is easily understandable that the red is the ultimate product and purple color is the intermediate product and the brown color is the brown color which is produced by the recessive allele is the substrate so there is brown substrate and with the action of dominant allele p or enzyme p the brown substrate is converted into purple product here which acts as a substrate for allele q or enzyme q and with the action of dominant allele q the purple product is being converted into red product here this is the process and uh, it is same here even the genotypes have been given in the questions already so it's quite easier to uh, follow the cross here so the f1 parents are purple and brown gametes are formed F1 generation had hetero, uh, heterozygous uh, dominant allele they had so the uh, hybrid so produced had red color product because both of the both the dominant alleles are produced so the ultimate product should be produced here so the ultimate product being red that is being produced here and F2 parents are like F1 hybrids were self crossed and the gametes are formed and they were taken in a Punnett square and then all the possible genotypes are filled in the boxes given here so it's the same thing same funda as we discussed in the first problem there whenever there is present there is presence of two dominant alleles then the ultimate product will be formed this is in the case of recessive epistasis whenever two dominant alleles two dominant non allelic genes are present together then the ultimate product will be formed so here the ultimate product is red wherever both the dominant alleles are present their red color product is being formed and whenever there is only the formation of one particular color for example here p is there dominant p is there while dominant q is absent which means a intermediate color is being formed which is purple and further enzyme q is absent here to form to convert the purple color into red product whereas in this case the same thing there is no uh, q uh, or the dominant allele q to convert the purple into red whereas in this third condition what happens is here uh, sorry here there is no dominant allele to convert the brown substrate into purple color itself therefore even if the uh, q allele dominant allele q or enzyme q is present there is no suitable substrate for them they need a purple color substrate which is not at all present so their their presence goes based here so they cannot express themselves without the substrate proper substrate as a result the progenies remains their substrate the the own the recessive color here that is the brown so that is how we get the f2 phenotypic ratio 9 is to 3 is to 4 with the phenotypic phenotypes red purple and brown respectively so this is most important uh, the epistatic uh, epistasis ratio that is the most important thing to remember so dominant epistasis will always have 12 is to 3 is to 1 ratio while recessive epistasis will always have 9 is to 3 is to 4 ratio so that is about the recessive epistasis